name of Jesus. How many of you ever been around somebody that prays in his name or in or in the man upstairs or all these things? No. There is power in the name of Jesus. Do not leave out the name of Jesus because there's no power be, be, be behind your prayer. Come on. So we have to pray in the name of Jesus. Luke 10, 17 says, Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Yes. The name of Jesus. There is power. People getting healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. People getting delivered in the name of Jesus. Yes. The blind are able to see in the name of Jesus. Yes. How many of us at one time were blinded? Come on. We're blind. Come on. I bet when you see a blind person, you, you're like, man, man, I bet it's horrible to, to not be able to see. But just remember that at one time we were like that. We weren't able to see either. And think about how horrible it was for us not being able to see what was right in front of us. Mark 16, 17 and 18 says, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Yes. When we pray, are we believing what we're praying for? Yes. Do we believe that we can be delivered? Yes. Do we believe that, that we have that ability for healing? Do we believe it? Or are we just like going to prayer as our last resort? Unfortunately, that's who we use prayer as, as our last resort. Facebook is our first resort. Mm -hmm. yeah. Social media is our first resort. Don't tell me nothing, just pray. It's like you, you, you want attention. How about receiving the attention from our Lord? And we right away plant that on social media because we want the attention. It's not that you don't want it, you want the attention. When we first put those words, don't say nothing, just pray. The Lord knows. Just pray. You want you want people to come to you and to feel bad for you for your situation. Come on. But first, we've got to take it to the throne of God. Yes. Instead of putting our lives on social media, social media is not going to do nothing because it just has a lot of opinions. Come on. But the Word of God has truth. Come on. Truth Power. that can deliver you yes. from whatever yes. that you're going through. Yes. Yes. I feel like I was just reborn or something. I know. Like, like, serio. <laughs> Acts 3.6 Then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. So many of us are still dead men walking. Come on. Come on. We're dead. There's no life in us. There's no ability in us. We know the things that we need to do, but we don't do them. We don't take place in the things of God. Man, I just had the most amazing... I was there, like, like maybe like with the time of rest and work and everything. 47 maybe, hours. Like, 20 some hours, I think. At the tent thing. Amen. And it was amazing. Yes. Amen. It was awesome. You know, just, man, it's just, it's something that I can speak about it all the time. I can speak about the Word of God and, and how awesome He is and, and how amazing He is. But you got to experience it yourself. Amen. Having somebody come and say, man, you need to go to Disneyland because, man, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and, and it's awesome. I mean, people can tell you about something, but it's not till you experience it yeah. that you're gonna receive something from it. That's right. I remember this last uh, um, last year we took my mom and dad to Universal Studios. 
And man, I see my mom and dad like children. It was like the biggest blessing. The biggest blessing for me was to see them. They were like, well, let's get on that one. Let's get on that And it's not, I mean, most of the rides are animated, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I tell my mom, oh, it's just a movie screen. It's just, you just sit down and it's just a movie screen. And I didn't tell her that the seats move and stuff. You know, she gets in there and she's like, like, but she liked it. They enjoyed it. See, but I, I, I could have told them about all this enjoyment that we were having. And, and they're like, oh, that's, you know, that's nice. But until they were able to experience it themselves, then what? I mean, we can tell people about the joy of the Lord. We can tell people about the blessings of God. We can tell people about the Lord healing. Yes. We can tell people about the Lord delivering. But until you experience it, you're never going to receive what I received. It's true. You know, it's not a coincidence that the Lord put me to work in a heart hospital. Come on. Wow. While the physicians are dealing with physical hearts, I'm dealing with spiritual hearts. Come on. Wow. It's just all about things. I mean, I start to look back in my history, and it was God at work. It was God at work, always. Always for His benefit, for His glory. Amen. Salvation comes only in His name, only in the name of Jesus. Acts 4.12 says, Nor there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Romans 10.13, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We are to baptize in the name of Jesus. Yes. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So we have to understand that there is power behind the name of Jesus. There is power. We, we should not be shy about the name of Jesus. You know why? In your workplace or anywhere else, you can mention any other God. Come on. Nobody has an issue with it. You didn't mention the name of Jesus. Come on. They're like, oh, uh oh, he said it. Yes, I said it. <laughs> you know why people get all freaked out? Because it brings conviction. Amen. It brings conviction to yeah. sin. It Come exposes on. you. Come on. That's change. Amen. Change get broken. Yes. Come on. That's what the enemy don't want. He wants us to walk around all offended like, like, oh man, I can't believe you said Jesus and stuff. Sometimes we go to people because we want a certain answer. But you go to a, a Bible-believing, Christian, thumping, Jesus freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. And he's not going to give you his opinion. He's going to give you the truth. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. And then next week you find yourself in HR. <laughs> like, but that's okay because we're speaking truth we're speaking truth God, not my job God supplies all of my needs God supplies everything that I need we are justified by the name of Jesus 1 Corinthians 6, 11, And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Whew. Everything we do and say should be done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Why are we so shy? Why are we so like, oh, I don't want to offend them. Come on. Why are we so concerned with other people and not concerned about pleasing our Father which is right. in heaven that gave His Son for you, yes. that gave His Son for us? Yes. You know, last night we were doing communion, we were partaking of communion, and man, it was just so beautiful. Yeah. But you start to reflect of the things that were done that, that the Lord was getting ready to do. And he, before He went through all that, He wanted to gather His closest friends 
and had a barbecue. I'm saying it in my terms, okay? Come on. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? He gathered his bestest friends. If we knew what kind of persecution we we're going to go through tomorrow, we would be freaking out right now. Come on. We don't even want anybody around. We don't want our friends. We don't want anybody around. Wow. But Jesus gathered them, said, come on, let's break bread together. Because breaking bread is a sign of intimacy. When you break bread with another brother or sister, when you invite somebody for a meal, it's a, it's a, it's a intimacy. And that's what the Lord wants from us, is that intimacy. He wants to have that intimacy with us. Colossians 3.17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord yes. Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. But it is praying in Jesus' name that I want to bring to the forefront this morning. Jesus has invited, urged, and commanded us to pray in His name and has promised incredible results. You know, I'm... Like, I do a lot of praying with people at the hospital, and, and I'm part of the chaplaincy there uh, as well. And one time, uh, a while back, we had this other head chaplain, and, and I got a little bit, you know, we, we had this, this, this volunteer um, dinner, where um, they had this dinner for all the volunteers and stuff. And... I was out for it because I'd been in the hospital. So my wife and I went and opening up in prayer. Prayed in the name of Jesus. A couple weeks later, he comes and he says, hey, you know, we had all kinds of denominations in there. We had all kinds of different beliefs and all that. Like, they weren't praying, I was. I'm like, if, if they have an issue with it, then they have to take it up with whoever they have to take it up with, with their God, which can do nothing about it. But <laughs> no, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is that, yeah. is that this is my prayer. This is my prayer. If, if, if I'm not going to pray in the, in the name of Jesus, then I'm not going to pray. When I pray for the sick, I believe that they can be healed. Yes. So I pray in the name of Jesus. Yes. When I pray for the addict, I pray in the name of Jesus because I believe that they can be delivered. Yes. See, without Jesus, without the name of Christ, without the name of Jesus, there is no power in your prayer. Yes. So if I'm just praying just to pray. I don't pray just to pray. I pray when I know that I'm going to receive the results I'm asking, the results I want, the results I need. And now you guys are going to start noticing what? When you guys are surrounded with friends or family or whatever. And, and you're going to start to notice how, diff how people pray. And a lot of us, even as believers, we leave out the name of Christ. We leave out the name of Jesus because we don't want to offend our friends. We don't want them to start calling us Bible freaks and uh, Bible thumpers or whatever. I mean, but... It should be an honor. Amen. It should be an honor Amen. to for people to recognize us as such thing, as such kind of man or woman, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, it's funny because I used to have an issue with Jesus freaks. Okay. And then he sends me a brother that every other word is comes out of his mouth and he's a Jesus freak. You know what I'm saying? And that's awesome. It's amazing because why? Because we're excited. We're excited about what God is doing and what God has done. And we want, we want people to know, we want people to recognize the God and the mighty God that we serve. Amen? Amen. Mm. When we pray, when I pray in the name of Jesus, I come boldly before God because of the power in the name of Jesus. There is power in His name. We, we identify with the person of Jesus Christ. 
when we became born again, we took on his identity. So it's like, you know, when, when, when you get married, the wife takes the identity of the husband. Yes. yes. Not like look alike, but you know what I'm saying? Takes the name. <laughs> that would be weird. Yes. My wife, both of us bald over here. You know? <laughs> right? <laughs> Jesus has literally given us his name. When we use that name, I, I am confessing that he is mine and that I am his. It is like going to the bank of heaven knowing I have nothing deposited. If I go in my name, I will get absolutely nothing. But Jesus Christ has unlimited funds in heaven's bank. And he has granted me the privilege of going to the bank with his name on my checks. And withdrawing everything that you want to withdraw. Yes. You know, I think it's Sunday. I think it's Saturday or Sunday on the twenty seventh. My wife and I celebrate anniversary for our second marriage. For those of you that don't know, my wife and I were divorced. You know, she she finally heard the the Lord and and we're divorced, but. Next week we'll be celebrating 13, 12, 12 years. Ago. <laughs> yeah, it seems like 50. Wow. 18 altogether. 18. Hallelujah. Yes. We pray in His authority. You know, when the Lord told me and spoke to me to fight for my marriage, I prayed believing that it was going to take place and it was going to come to pass because I was willing to give up the rest of my life to pray that God will restore it. I was willing to give up my whole future believing that this was going to take place again. But he seen that it was going on for months and months so he finally said, okay, it's time. I said, when prayer works, when we pray the right way, Amen. when we pray with the authority of Christ, with the authority of Jesus, prayer works, Amen. even today. Amen. Look at this seven-year-old boy. He got all emotional. He got all emotional talking about the Lord. So you tell me that God does not exist. He's like, he, he was enough to like saying, well, are we almost done? I need to go play now. <laughs> because he was sensitive to the Spirit of God. That's right. And the Spirit of God is at work in him, even at the age of seven. We have to submit to the will of God. As I was praying <laughs> for Pastor Cesar over two years ago, there had been so many opportunities along the road. So many things that took place along the road. And for one reason or another, it just never panned out. It never panned out. See, because sometimes we jump on opportunities that we think are from God, in reality, they're not from God. But then we would have missed this opportunity. Mm -hmm. We're like, Lord, I need a sign. So you call 30 of your friends, speak to <laughs> one of them. But and then you finally one of your friends gives you the answer that you're looking for and then you go with that one after 29 of your friends say, no, it's not the right move. Right? Sometimes that's how we treat God. Preach. Mm. Well, how do I know He's speaking to me? Well, start reading your Bible. Yes, so. Start praying, start seeking Him, start seeking His face. And believe me, God will give you the answers that you're looking for. Every single time. It might not be when you want it, but don't give up praying. Don't give up believing. 
My wife prayed for me when I was a heathen. My wife prayed. How long? Oh gosh. A long time. <laughs> eleven, long. eleven years. Not long. Eleven, eleven years. For she eleven prayed for me years. for eleven years. For eleven years. Eleven years. After the first day, she probably wanted to give up. Come on. But she pursued for eleven years. Why? Because she knew and understood the mighty God that she served. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We prayed for her son for 10 years, not having no communication. And then he didn't only come back to our lives, but he came to Christ. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> See, prayer works when you pray the right way. When you pray according to the will of God. Because it's so easy to get, com to, to get things com twisted and, and confused with our will. Mm -hmm. Lord, this is what I want. This is what I desire. This is, you have too many eyes there. When you have too many eyes in your prayer, then you have to change it. Because we have to understand that it's to do the will of our Father. What He wills for us to do. And how do we get that direction? By seeking Him continually. Pray without ceasing. I'm almost done. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> no, I'm not feeling like that. <laughs> She continued to be that light of the cross, continued to be that light. Yes. Even though I would speak the way I spoke, even though I would do the things I did, she continued to pray and believe. She could have kicked me out. She could have done away with me a long time ago. Amen. But she refused. She continued to fight. Until finally she turned me over completely to the Lord yes. and removed herself totally from the picture. Wow. And that's where I learned to fight my battles on my knees. So I want to see if I can get royalties from that song because. <laughs> <laughs> it is much the same as the legal arrangement known as the power of an attorney. Mm. Such matters. One person may represent another in his absence. They act in their behalf. Jesus has given every believer unlimited and general power of attorney in all matters. And with the right to use his name in every situation. Yes. Amen? Amen. And then last but not least, we pray with expectancy. Yes. We pray with the ex expectancy of knowing that God's going to fulfill what He set out to fulfill. But remember, church, we have to pray according to His will. Yes. I want a Lamborghini, I want a big house, I want all this stuff, right? And you're like, go back to His word. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Pray according to His will. Well, we think of, of God's blessing as material things. Yeah. That's the least of it. Yeah. Come on. That's the least of it. The biggest blessing is a man changing his heart Amen. from stone to flesh. Yes. That is the biggest blessing. Yes. You know, Matthew 6, 33 says to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Mm. The Lord knows what you need. Yes. But we have to seek first his kingdom, his way of thinking, his way of doing things. 
And the only way we're going to know how to do it is by seeking Him in His Word, seeking Him in prayer. Surround yourself with godly men and women that are going to speak life to you. Amen. Sometimes we like to surround ourselves by people that just speak negative. And then we start buying into that same neg negativity. We have to remove ourselves from there. And start receiving life. Come on. Because that's why Jesus came. To give us life and life in abundance. So a true blessing of God is when people are being saved. When people are being delivered. That's God's blessing. Everything else is going to come to pass. Everything else you need, God will supply it. Gloria. Believe me, He's going to supply it. Gloria. You need a car, He will supply it, but seek first His kingdom. Come on. You need a house, He will supply it, but seek first His kingdom. Amen. When we pray in Jesus' name, we may accept, expect the answer in a in a second, okay, or in accord with the value of His name, so we can pray with great and excited expectation. When we pray, we got to pray without ceasing. we got to continually yes. have the, the mind of Christ on us constantly. Yes. The Bible says to put on the armor of God. It doesn't say to take it off, so you should stop taking it off and Come start on. putting it on every morning because if you already have it on, you don't need to put it on. You just have to tighten it up. Yes, Come on. Man. Right. Wow. <laughs> Good word, yes. We're like, man, I put on the armor of God every morning, then that's your problem. You gotta stop taking it off. Yes. Think about when the enemy strikes, is at night. Yes, so. He starts running rapid through your mind and starts messing with your brain. But let me tell you, church, and I'm going to close with this. The more of God that's in you, the less of the devil can be in you because they cannot, cannot coexist together. They can't coexist together. So the more of God, the more of the Word we have in us, the less of sin can enter our body. So the more of God, God will push out the darkness out of our life. God will push out the, the dry bones. He will push out everything that does not need to be there. It's like a cleansing. Yes, the Word will cleanse you day in and day out. But we have to believe Him. We have to understand that we're in a place of cleansing. Man, I am excited about what God has in, has in store for us. I was telling Pastor Sister, man, I haven't been this excited since I got saved and I married my wife. And so I said, so that speaks a lot about you, bro. But God is getting ready to do some great things. And each and every one of our lives, are we gonna receive it? Or are we gonna continue to walk in darkness? You know, because we can come to church and we can be dealing with all these issues, but and, and you know what? I have everything put together. Everything's in order in my mind. Everything's put together. I mean, that's what we start to believe. We start to think that. When in reality, it's not like that. We're broken and sad, but we don't want people to know. We, don't, we want them to think that we have it all. I'm a, like one of the best Christians they've ever met. What are they going to say? Let me tell you what they're going to say. They're going to say, man, I'm not the only one. I'm going to the altar today.